Okay, let's get started on this part. Let's see what we have to do here. I think uh, probably the order of operations for this part is, uh, I think first thing I'll do is turn down the diameter for the neural, the 1.095. Then I'll turn down this diameter for the uh, <coughs> graduations and the numbers, along with the 30 degree, or the 30 thousandths by 45 degree chamfer. And I'll show you kind of a, a neat way to do that. You can use the same tool for both both surfaces. Uh, once that done, that's done, we can. Uh, well, let's see. When I do this diameter, I'll face it off first, set my uh, carriage stop to zero. Then I'll know how far to move over. I have to move over 395 to put that chamfer on there. <clears throat> I'll show you how to do that. Once that's done, we can throw the neural on it. And we have to uh, drill a hole in the center and uh, ream it to uh, 375, 3 eighths of an inch for the, uh, the mandrel. And then we'll part it off. I did find a smaller piece of stock. It said an inch and a half. I found a piece of inch and an eighth. So that'll mean a lot less roughing. Always a good thing. I want to make sure that uh, there's enough stock sticking out of the out of the out of the truck here. It's uh our part's three quarter long. We gotta have an extra quarter inch or so for the neural. So let's leave it stick out about I don't want to get it out too far because then you um, this probably I don't have to worry about this thing chattering too much. Let's stick it out an inch and a half. That'll be plenty of room around the chunk. So the first thing we're gonna thing we're gonna do is turn that 1.095 diameter. We'll just use a, a right hand turning tool. Perpendicular to the work. We're not turning to a shoulder at this point, so I don't really care that the tool's at an angle to the work, the cutting edge anyway. Uh, let's see here, our RPM, this is about an inch, and I think this is leaded steel, so it's about 110 uh, surface feet per minute, so that's 440 RPM. About there. Okay, we only have uh, 30 thousandths stock on here, so I have to be a little bit careful taking my trial cut. Remember I said never take a, any bigger trial cut than you absolutely have to. Just going to loosen my dial here and we'll take a few thousandths off. Just enough to get a micrometer on. see where we're at. Looks like about one inch, 118 thousandths. <coughs> so, 1.118 minus 1.095, that's our finish diameter. Means we got 23 thousandths to go. So I'm going to set my uh, cross slide dial to uh, 23 thousandths to the right of zero. That way when I get down to size the dial will be on zero and I won't have to remember that silly number. So I'm going to take all but 10 thousandths off on this first cut. Hey, you know what the heck. Let's take it all off. It's not very much of a cut. Take the whole thing. I'm going to speed it up a little bit too since there's very little material to remove. Get a little nicer finish that way. You need to go in about an inch, about there. Okay, that should be 1.095 since my cross slide dials on zero. Yeah, 1.0955, close enough for government work. 
All right, that's the uh, that's the diameter for the uh, the knurl. Now I'm going to change setups a little bit here for this next diameter. Um, I'm going to use my compound rest to create that 45 degree chamfer. So let me swing it around. I'm going to do my cutting on the front of the work. So I'm going to swing my compound around to the rear. <clears throat> Set it on 45 degrees. And I'll show you why in a second here. Out there. Swing the tool post around so we can get into the get back to the work. And then I'm going to use a tool with a little sharper angle on it because I'm going to be facing to a well, not really a shoulder, but a uh, facing facing to a chamfer, facing turning to a chamfer. See, let's back this compound off a little bit so we have a little bit of travel. Set it on zero. And I'll angle the tool a little. Well, you don't really need to angle it because we're going to be cutting a, a, cha a 45 degree chamfer, so just straight in is fine. Well, actually, you know what? Back up a bit. Let's angle it a little bit, maybe 10 degrees relative to the end of the part. The first thing I'm going to do is face off the end of the part. Let's go ahead and do that. This part's already been faced once. We'll just clean it up a little bit. And this is definitely leaded steel, probably 12L14. Nice machining stuff. Okay, so now my carriage is, uh, I've just faced the end of the part off and I haven't moved anything. So I'm going to set my uh, carriage stop to zero. there. So now my tools even with the end of the work now if I move over 395 thousandths on my carriage stop that's that's where my uh, chamfer starts. So let's uh, run the tool until it touches. We have to go from uh, 1.095 to uh, 1.036. That's 59 thousandths. So let me just run until the tool touches and I'll take a little bit of a cut here. Just enough to measure again. We're going to zero out the tool and the diameter. Just like we did with the, uh, the diameter for the neural. Take a trial cut and set the cross slide dial. So we are at one inch, 66 thousandths. And we want to go to one inch, 36 thousandths. So I don't need a calculator for that. Sounds like 30 thousandths. So I'll set my cross slide dial 30 thousandths to the right of zero. And I'm going to take this in one one cut, 30 thousandths is... It's good enough uh, for a single cut. Alright, so I'm going to watch my... my uh, well, actually, you know what? Let's do the same thing when the carriage stop. Let's run that back to zero. And I'll just uh, move the carriage stop in through the 395 thousandths. Now, take that back. Let's do it this way. There's lots of ways to do this. I'm just kind of thinking on the fly here. Okay, carriage stops on zero. Let's move the uh, carriage in 395. One, two, 395. And I'm just going to zero my carriage stop out at that point. That way it's easy. When I'm turning the, this shoulder, I'll know, know, know when to stop. I don't have to count revolutions on the carriage stop. I have a dial indicator on this stop. Okay, so let's do that. Run our cross slide into zero. Start the feed. Keep my eye on the 
dial and the carriage stop. As soon as I get to zero, then I'm going to stop because that's the uh, the length of this diameter right there. Okay, now I just use my my compound to do the little 30 degree by 40 or 45 by 30 thousand chamfer. Okay, so that's it. That's all there is to it. That's really, if you want a nice looking uh, chamfer, that's the best way to do it. Use, it, use your uh, cross slide. So you're, you're single pointing it rather than relying on the angle that you set your tool. Makes a, a, a lot nicer finish. Okay, so now let's swing this uh, compound back around again. Back around to the front. I usually keep it set. Set on 45 degrees, keeps it out of the way, everything. Okay, now we're going to do some knurling. Set my tool post roughly square to the, to the work. Alright, we've already calculated our knurl diameter, we've turned it. Now it's time to throw a knurl on it. I, I use a uh, a uh, clamp type knurling tool. Okay, it has has two knurls in it. You're, you see, I've put the uh, the medium knurl, the re medium knurls into the holders. Okay, these are much much better. Any type of clamp knurler is much better than uh, the type that you push against the the work with your cross slide. <clears throat> Doing that's really hard on the the nut on your cross slide because it takes so much pressure to force the knurl into the work. These things. They 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 um, press the knurls in themselves. They don't rely on the force from the cross slide to do it. It has opposing screws on it, and it just pushes them into the work on both sides. You've also seen there are also clamp tight knurls, knurling tools that like a big C clamp that clamp the knurls on. That's the same same principle. Okay, but these are real handy. In fact, I'll probably this is probably going to be one of my projects later on. We'll, we'll build one of these things because they're a real handy knurling tool to have. Okay, they just mount right on, just mounts right on your tool post like that. And we roughly set the height, center height to, zero, to the center of the part. It's not that critical, just get it somewhere in the general vicinity. And we'll open the knurls up high enough or far enough to reach over the part. Okay, and then we'll just run them until they touch. And this one I like to snug down the, the lock screws a little bit before we force the knurls into the work. Okay, we're all set up here. Now all I'm going to do is just crank the knurls in the same amount on each side. Let's try a quarter turn here to start with. Run at slow spindle speed. Use cutting oil. And make a knurl. Just let it turn the power feed on and just let it go over the across the work. Reverse it, and we'll, then we'll take a look at the neural and see how good of a job we did. Let me grab a rag here and wipe it off. I think we're there. It looks pretty darn good. I always like to use a, a loop and look at it, make sure it's fully formed. 
Yep, yeah, that looks good. It's right up to a point. You, know, you always want to form your neurals till they come to a sharp point. Okay, that's it for the neural. Now let's put the uh, put the reamed hole in the center so we can mount mount the part on a mandrel after we part it off. See how well my split point drill centers it up here. Looks pretty good. All right, we need to go in about, uh, about an inch. what's going on with this drill. I'm going to grab another drill. Hold on a second here. Alright, let's try this one. I don't know what was going on with that other drill, but there's plenty of drills around. That other girl was probably worn out. The flutes on the outside were probably worn and it was uh, wedging in the hole. There's an inch. It's deep enough. Okay, now, since uh, I want this hole to be concentric with the part, because we're going to use this hole to, to mount the part and uh, cut the graduations in it. So I want I want this hole to be perfectly concentric with the diameter on the outside. So what I'm going to do to ensure that is uh, run a boring bar in the hole to center it up. A drilled hole is never concentric on the part. It's, going to say it's close, but it's never really concentric. You want a concentric hole, you have to run a boring bar in it. It'll not only produce a much rounder hole than a, a drill, it'll produce it right on the exact center of the part. You won't get any wobbling at all. I'm not going to bore it to size, I'm just going to clean it up with the boring bar, and then I'm going to throw a reamer in. Save a little time. The, uh, the hole was running out and I started putting the uh, boring bar in. So this boring bar is going to straighten the hole out real nice. I 
you say, I don't really care what the diameter is as long as it's smaller than 3 8 All I want to do is clean it up and make it, make it on center. Just like that. Okay? So now, I have a nice round hole on center. Now I can put my reamer in the tailstock and ream that out to size and we'll be ready to, ready to cut the part off. Always use lots of oil on reamers. And always slow, slow them down a little bit. Reamers are expensive. Last thing you want to do is burn one up because you're running too fast of a spindle speed. We need to go three quarters of an inch. There's eight hundred thousandths right there. So that's good. The last thing we have to do is uh, part it off. Make sure I got enough uh, parting tool sticking out, but not too much. Always keep your tool overhang to a minimum with a parting tool. I don't know if I've done. I don't know if I've done a demo with a parting tool yet or not. I guess. I guess I have. Yeah. Probably the most important thing. Well, so there are a lot of important things that contribute to parting. It has to be on center vertically. It has to be dead square to the work, and I mean dead square. So I'm going to line the blade of the parting tool up with the end of the uh, part where I faced it off. Right there. Okay. Now it needs to be is 750 thousandths long so we'll cut it off about 800 leave, leave some room for uh, to face the other end off seem to have misplaced my ruler go grab another one. Oh, here it is all right 800 thousandths is right there Make sure your party tool is sharp too to begin with. I just sharpened this one up so I don't have to worry about it. For steel like this, use a you know good use good thread cutting oil. And keep it keep it lubricated all the way in. For aluminum, I like to use uh, like WD-40 or something like that. Steel, it's, it's hard to beat a good sulfur based cutting oil for parting. That's about all there is about with that. So now we'll just uh, flip it around and chuck up on the the part we turned for the graduation and dial in uh, numbers, and face her to length and uh, cut that six tenth diameter raised portion. Okay, so now we will uh, first thing I'll do is take the burrs off of this bore because I'm going to locate off of of this face now to uh, face the part to length and also to uh, machine that six tenths diameter raised portion in the center here. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to use a parallel to set the part on. Like that. 
that. Don't forget to take the parallel out. Okay, now. Now we can throw a facing tool in. Take a trial cut on the end of the part. And then if we can't measure the part in place, we'll take it out and measure it there. high now. Make sure the tool's on center. I think we have a lot of stock here, but you never want to take more than you need to for your first cut. Alright, I don't know if I can get a uh, micrometer in there. I don't think so. Well, maybe. Nope, doesn't look like it. Maybe if I take the shield off. There we go. Alright, so we have... Seven ninety seven ninety two and a half. Seven nine two five. And we want we want seven fifty plus nothing minus five. So let's take seven fifty from this. These 42 and a half thousandths, and if we have a uh, minus five tolerance, we'll knock another two and a half off of that, so we'll call it uh, 40 thousandths. 40 thousandths to go. So now, without moving my carriage, I'll set my uh, carriage stop. Zero out the dial. Or set it on offset at 40 thousandths, either way. I think I can remember 40 thousandths here. Okay, that's the size. Now I'm going to cut that step in there. Let me re zero out my carry stop again. And that step is uh, 720 from 750. It's uh, 30 thousandths deep, so let's go in like uh, 20. 25. That should leave enough step that I can measure. This is not a critical dimension, so I'm just going to use a caliper. Uh, 917. The finished diameter is supposed to be 6 tenths, so we got 317 thousandths to go. I've already set my carriage dial to zero. So I'm just going to go in 300 and well let's go in uh, let's go in 307. That'll leave a little bit extra stock. And I left left five thousandths on the depth, so let's go into uh, let's go in the full amount now, three seventeen, and thirty thousandths deep.
All right, last thing to do is cut the 30,000 steep uh, chamfer on the on the uh, neural. Run until it touches. Set the carriage stop and go another 30. And that's it. Alright, so here is the uh, here's the part. You can see the uh, the neural up close turned out pretty nice. Got a good finish. I'll probably uh, throw it on the mandrel next and I'll, I'll knock these corners off a little bit. They're, the corners are still pretty sharp. I'll just hit them with a file or maybe my, my chamfering tool. So let's see where is that uh, mandrel. There we go. See now we can press this onto the onto the mandrel and it can hold onto the mandrel to do all the work on this side without worrying about messing up the neural or whatever else. Then when we're done we'll put we'll take the mandrel out, open the center hole up to a 716 tap drill and run the tap into it. Alright that's another night though. It's already well past my uh, cutoff time. I try not to be out here too late at night. So tomorrow we'll we'll hit it again. See you then.